Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to simply bleed air from the high pressure fuel line on the Ford Ranger or even uh, the Mazda BT50. So some of the symptoms of having air trapped in those uh, fuel lines could be that you have difficulty starting the car. Um, the car may crank but not fire. It may crank, fire and then cut out. Um, it might idle a bit roughly, um, may not even start at all, or may actually um, misfire. So why might you need to do this? Well, quite simply, um, after you've changed the uh, fuel filter, or even if you ran the tank dry, um, air can get trapped in the high pressure fuel lines. And um, in a diesel, that can be quite a big thing because that disrupts the preciseness and the pressure uh, within the um, injectors and, and that can cause like I said misfires or even can cause difficulty in actually trying to uh, start uh, the car up. So of course you can draw um, the air from the fuel lines that are um, in the uh, or connected rather to the fuel filter here that's the actual low pressure system. Um, alternatively, and this is how I'm going to explain it, you can draw or bleed the air from the high pressure fuel pump, <laughs> which uh, the inlet valve and line is located under the, the cover. The reason you'd want to do it from the high pressure side and not the low pressure side is if there is air trapped in the low pressure side, that ultimately is going to go to the high pressure side anyway. So you may as well save your time and effort and just simply and easily draw it from here once and then it's it's completely done. So let's do that. First step that we have to do is we have to remove this cover and just simply pull it up and bring it away uh, from the engine. Now the high pressure fuel line is actually this bit here okay and the way to do that there's a, a retaining clip here which is the similar or the same clips to the ones that you will find on your fuel filter and what I do is I just get a little pick because it's easier and it will just go under here about there and just work it up and I'll show you that um, and how to do that right now okay so the first thing that we need to do is we need to get um, a little pick uh, something that's small and that's got a hook on it and here I am just putting it in a, a little bit of a groove that's there at the top and just gently I'll be levering it against the elbow um, of the pipe. If you've ever changed your fuel, fuel filter and removed the pipes it's a similar technique so just gently wiggle it up. Got to retain that clip though, don't, um, don't drop it, uh, they're incredibly hard to reconnect. Okay, so the next um, step of this process, once we've raised the clamp, is simply just to put some rag, old rag of course, or some absorbent paper uh, around where the pipe will become disconnected. Um, it is inevitable there will be some fuel spillage. However, it is diesel, it isn't explosive, so it wouldn't be uh, a problem if some uh, was to spill onto the hot manifold however just to keep things neat and tidy always best to put some absorbent paper or rag around where we'll be uh, working The next step is to separate the two pipes, separate the high pressure hose. So uh, one of them is slightly barbed, so you will have to give it a little bit of a, a wriggle. Don't use too much excessive force. It will be a little tight. Just gently wiggle the two, prise them apart, and you'll find they'll uh, come apart relatively easy. Okay, so with the absorbent paper all ragged down and the two pipes um, now successfully separated, um, we need to get something to capture the fuel in. What works best is a paper 
cup, a coffee cup. Here I'm using a McDonald's, of course. Others are available. And just gently lift the pipe up and you'll find that an average size cup will be uh, nicely nestled uh, underneath, ready to capture the fuel. Okay, so the next step is to bleed the system. And the way to do this is to switch the ignition on to start the fuel pump. You may find it easier if there are two of you um, doing this. When you start the fuel pump, you'll hear some air gurgling out. Uh, that's absolutely uh, correct. That's the air coming out of the system. What I tend to do is I tend to do this um, twice. And uh, like I said, always find it handy if there is somebody ready to turn the ignition off. In my case, I was using my, um, or letting my daughter help me. You will find that the fuel comes out at a uh, relatively quick rate of knots, so um, make sure that uh, whoever uh, is turning the ignition off, or even if it's yourself, if you're doing it solo, uh, does it quite quickly, because that cup will fill up uh, quickly uh, under the fuel that, uh, that comes out, of course. Okay, so this is me uh, now complete. I've done it twice, all the air is out. And all that remains now is to uh, tidy up any spillages and reverse the previous uh, steps and connect everything back together. In the same way that you disassembled the pipe, um, ensure that you use a little bit of force, gentle force, I suppose, to uh, press down. Uh, on the pipe. You will hear it uh, click as the barbs engage with each other. And then once it's down, um, just give it a little bit of a pull upwards to make sure it is properly uh, engaged. Once you're satisfied it is clipped in with the barb, uh, you just need to re-close the blue clasp and that'll be that pipe fully um, connected. Again, you'll hear a clip with the class going down. And just uh, give it a gentle wipe down uh, around the pipe in the area, because this will then ensure that it's relatively dry, so that when you come to start it up, you'll easily spot if there are any leaks. Chances are they won't be, but nonetheless, it will help to spot any uh, leaks that you may need to remediate, i.e. you haven't got the pipe clipped in uh, correctly. So then just simply um, go back to the car, um, cycle the ignition three times to allow the fuel uh, to go through um, the system. This will determine whether you've got an initial leak under no pressure. Um, and then when you've done that about three times, um, go ahead and start the vehicle. Uh, let the vehicle run at its normal RPM and then um, raise the RPM uh, as if it was driving quite hard. Um, and this will determine whether or not there's any uh, leaks coming out of that pipe that you may not have uh, connected together correctly. With the engine running, be very careful of course, not to catch any loose clothing or anything else dangling in any of the machinery, but just give the area that you've reconnected a little bit of a wipe down, just to make sure everything is tidy, everything is uh, clean, and then um, start to rev your engine uh, to put it under a bit of load and a bit of pressure um, and then you'll easily be able to see if there are any leakages. If you followed these steps correctly and if you've uh, connected the two pipes together uh, and shut the clasp in a similar way to what you would do with the fuel filter um, you'll see there'll be no leaks like, like we have here. We have no leaks. It's absolutely fine. Okay, so once you're satisfied that everything is okay, uh, give it a little wipe down. Uh, what remains to happen is to uh, close your bonnet, take it for a little bit of a test drive, come back, ha have a look under the hood, make sure everything still is okay, it will be, um, and then just simply put the um, engine cover back on and uh, away you go. Uh, that is it, really. All of any air that's in the fuel system will have been bled out. Um, you should have no further problems with if it's failing to start because of air or if it's running um, badly or even if it's misfiring due to air in the fuel system. So if you found this uh, video uh, super useful, um, do me a super favour please, it helps my uh, channel grow, please do subscribe, comment and like. 
okay take care everybody and we'll see you um, in the next uh, useful video